So we're about to start a 12 to 6 rehearsal. It's a Sunday. And now I have a break until about 2.15. It's 12.30, so the warm-up takes us about a half hour usually. So I'm gonna go make some lunch. Um, <laughs> but something that I forgot to say yesterday that I really wanted to bring up quickly was that a lot of the time in scenes, it's not just a magic, let's run it, and then we'll block it, and then boom, done. You have to build the scene through exercises and connections and relationships with the actors and the characters. So a lot of work always goes into making a scene, but a lot of the exercises that we do in studio are a lot of eye contact, a lot of spatial distancing. And so over Zoom, it's difficult, it's more difficult to find those exercises that cater to where we need the scene to be. But we're very lucky to have a team that's so creative and willing to come up with specific ideas for how we can work those things in. So yesterday, David had myself and another actor participate in a little improvisation exercise, which incorporated a lot of language, which is something new to me because I'm so used to building relationships off movement and physicality. To dive in with language was, I'm not gonna lie, a little nerve wracking, but I honestly felt like it helped the depth of my character so much more. Finding different exercises over Zoom can actually be quite beneficial. So I wasn't as active in today's rehearsal as I was in yesterday's. I got quite a few breaks. I was only there for three scenes. They went fairly well. They were fairly fun. So something that we played around with today, and I kind of touched on this a couple days ago when I talked about contradicting the text, but I mean it in a different context today. So um, I'm not gonna refer to it as that, but because people aren't in the space and we've had to kind of rework the intentions of the characters, the intentions of the storyline and how it's told, the perspective through it's told, the lens literally because we're <laughs> gonna be filming it. Because we've made all those adjustments now, we can't restrict ourselves to the blocking in the script, yet the blocking in the script is also referred to in the language. We have to pursue different meanings of what's being said, but we also have to make it clear to the audience what is going on. Um, something that David brought up in the last scene we just worked, this moment between myself and another actor, Diego Blanco, and our characters have this great moment of tension. If we were in a studio together, that tension would be extremely active. We're trying so hard to bounce off each other with these quick one-liners, but there's that automatic lag. One more thing that I wanted to quickly add was that I'm an avid podcast listener, and today I listened to a podcast by The Daily, and they were discussing a theater in Massachusetts that actually did a live performance of Godspell with an actual live audience. And I believe they performed outside. They also aren't shying away from the fact that they've had to make these changes due to COVID. It's not just being passed over or ignored. So it was a bit inspiring for me because they were really honest and they talked about the challenges. And there are challenges, plain and simple and it's about working through them and starting that conversation. And we're finding a way to still do theater in a time right now where theater is near impossible. So it's really important to have that perspective. We're about to go into another rehearsal. It's a six to 10 one, so just four hours today. We're about to start in just six minutes to be exact. Um, see you soon. So we're on a little break right now and I just wanted to touch base on something we did at the beginning of rehearsal today. So David actually posed a question to us. What does creating the show mean to the community that we're in and that community being the dramatic arts program that we're all involved with? As much as we wish that theater could be in a theater, if we can have that mindset of we're gonna put on the best show that we possibly can with the resources that we have in front of us, then I think the audience's attitude may reflect that. Like I wish I could be surrounded by my peers and my friends and my castmates and the crew, but I'm grateful that, that we've been able to adjust to fit the time that we're in and that we're able to move forward in some direction, period. And then David brought up the fact that most of our joy and love for the art comes from being in communication with each other. So he posed that to us basically saying, it's those little moments of joy that other people bring us and let's not be in denial of the challenges, but instead let's take those extra steps to be able to make each other more comfortable and not just with each other, like not just with the cast and the crew that we have currently working on the show, but with our entire dark community. Okay, so pardon my um, red cheeks and puffy eyes. <laughs> we just ran through a super emotional scene, so it, um, Ooh, it hit me a bit, um, to say the least, but it was good. I'm really glad that we got to the place that we did in that scene. For a moment, it almost felt like we broke through the screen. So I'm very, very happy. Like I'm very, very happy with the place we got to tonight because I felt so connected with the character. So for a couple minutes there doing rehearsals over Zoom, 
was nowhere near the front of my head. It was the farthest thing back in my mind because I was so focused on on the emotional intensity of the character. It is possible and you are capable of finding these discoveries over a Zoom rehearsal. From the place we started where we first ran the scene tonight to the place where we ended when we last ran the scene tonight, there were leaps and bounds that I felt personally. We're about to start another six to 10 rehearsal. I am bundled up all nice because it's really cold in my house. <laughs> Even though I look like I'm about to go into the ice caps or something. I don't know, maybe it's just the white sweater, but I feel like a polar bear. Anyways, so every time we have rehearsal, either the day of or the night before, our stage manager, Peter, will send us a link to the Zoom meeting, and then we find that email, as I'm doing right now, Ooh, and I see my face pop up, and I really do look like I'm going skiing or something. But. So we just finished rehearsal, and with that, we got through all the scenes. So in one week's time, we've run through 20 scenes, except one because we're doing some ensemble work within it. So we're gonna develop that on the weekend. The positivity and the excitement and the joy that you have to go into projects with, not just that 100% determination and commitment, but the optimism and, and the faith is more prevalent than ever. It needs to be to an extreme degree and I could only imagine that once theater is back to its typical runnings, how we as artists will dig even deeper and dig even more. Essentially, that passion prior to COVID was already ever so prevalent. And now post COVID, I can only imagine, it leaves me almost speechless to, to think of what artists will now leave on the stage. Our associate director, Molly Lacey, is also one of my very close friends. She's doing amazing work on the show thus far. Molly is trying to put together online cast bonding experiences, which is awesome. It really is. Um, and it's really important to say that's awesome. I've never felt more in need of having a the glass is half full perspective. We've never needed to lift each other up more. So that's gonna be the end of my very messy thought train tonight. And that's okay. Okay, so I'm once again back editing as I'm finishing up this vlog. I feel like this vlog kind of showcased an array of emotions, which is realistic when you're working in theater productions. So rehearsals, I absolutely adore. They tend to be the best part of my day unless I do something beyond extravagant. But as with anything you love, it's not always going to be perfect. In fact, nothing is ever perfect. And what's important is on a day where you don't necessarily feel like your mindset is, is in the right space, is to have those exercises and, and personal attributions to help yourself get there. So I think it's genuinely important to showcase what happens off the stage and in the process of gearing up towards the stage. So coming up on the vlogs, we have some exciting things. I got to leave my house and go to the Marilyn I Walker. Which, you know, that's something extravagant. Um, so find out why I got to go there next time and also more rehearsal things. I find myself getting more adjusted to Zoom rehearsals, which is a great discovery for myself. So I hope you stay tuned to see those and you're excited to see those. I'm excited to talk about them, even though I kind of already have. So thanks for hanging out with me. See you next time.